Some people want to play Airsoft in a mall, and some people want to play it in an abandoned factory. But that's kitty stuff. I want to play Airsoft on the streets of Pyongyang, or during the middle of a Rammstein or a Slipknot concert. I'm talking about five never going to happen scenarios. Five places you'll never be able to actually step into wearing all your gear with hundreds of other players around you. I want to make a list of five dream AOs that anyone will want to play airsoft at without taking any of the dangers or restrictions into consideration. We're not going to go as crazy as playing airsoft floating around the International Space Station with SpaceX sponsoring the whole thing, but I think I've got a fun list for you that I'm sure people in the comments down below will definitely add to. So, this is five dream places that you'll never play Airsoft, which is sponsored by Airsoft GI, who do so much to keep US Airsoft going, like sending me to fields and arenas to meet you guys, like Augusta Airsoft and Balahack Airsoft. They also send me a whole bunch of stuff to review, and they give me a place to sell the official US Airsoft sticker. A link for these stickers will be listed down below in the description like it should be, because Airsoft GI are the all-time goats for supporting all the weird stuff I do. And this is sponsored by G&G Armament, who keep my stock of review items pretty healthy. They just never cease to amaze me when I open up a box from them, so I really want to show them some love. But with all that Ren said, let's get into the fifth spot. I would love to play airsoft in an airport, like one of those huge international airports with tunnels and different terminals. Tell me guys, do you want to have yourself a no Russian moment? Imagine emptying a place like Phoenix's Sky Harbor International Airport, leaving all the planes behind, all the stores open, and allowing airsofters to just run across the runways if they please. Have the event during a powerful thunderstorm that's just raging outside, and maybe a lights out event where only the bare essential emergency lighting are on, and I'd pay $500 for a ticket to that event, even if I was forced to film the whole thing. You can guarantee I'd be making Mall Warfare 2 themed terminal videos out of an event like that. And I'd probably hear the phrase, Remember, no rush. A few thousand times. Plane clearing, long range terminal fights, maybe even control tower battles. It would be amazing, especially if trains and baggage carts are available to travel over the larger distances of an AO like this. There's no need to just limit this to Sky Harbor though. There's dozens of huge and elaborate airports in the world, and I hear that Japan has several of the best airports ever constructed. Just the scope of something like this might make you understand now what kind of AOs will be in this countdown. And this is only number five. At the fourth spot, we crank things up, and we possibly might get a copyright claim or a takedown just because of this. Because Disney World is another never gonna happen AO that we would lose our minds at if we were given the chance. Specifically, the OG location in Orlando, Florida, just for bonus points. Magic Kingdom is huge, and anyone can find an area they'd want to set up shop in. You can even plan the whole event in just one of the many themed hotels. Or you could head over to Star Wars amusements and break every rule that the staff would throw you out for. From urban to long range and even to intense CQC environments, unlike our airport idea, this AO has it all. Including a whole bunch of rides and a whole lot of water. And a lot of alligators. So you don't really have any excuse to live out an action movie in real life. I just better see some really hardcore Disney inspired loadouts. Maybe plan your fantasy operations around wintertime though. A location like this wouldn't be a cakewalk during the hotter months in Florida. And why not have Disney World dressed up pretty for the completely incorrect occasion? But something that I've been really thinking about while putting this video together is damage expenses. Because if you even think for a moment that thousands of airsofters wouldn't shoot out lights or bust windows or ruin the cosmetics of some of these places, you're truly lying to yourself. But I did say no restrictions. So, I guess we can do whatever we want at Disney World in this scenario. So when I first started to think how I'd rank some of the AOs in this countdown, I immediately knew that I wanted to add a luxury Las Vegas hotel and casino, like the Venetian or the Luxor. But, you know what, f*** it. We're already playing pretend with what's possible, so how about let's just set up a huge milsim operation spanning the entire Las Vegas Strip. You can guarantee that people are going to get lost, overheated, and people are just going to break off and do whatever else imaginable. It's the Las Vegas Strip. This place can be beautiful and stunning if you just look around at all the buildings and lights. And if you're a Rainbow Six Vegas fan, then I'm sure you have a chubby right now. 
I've been there several times now, but I still find myself looking at the Bellagio fountains, looking at all the doorways, the arches, all the casinos, and just thinking how spooky it would be if you were the only person on the strip. Besides taking several duffel bags to make your airsoft budget much larger, running up from the south side of the strip to make my way to the Venetian or the Aria Sky Suites to extract the VIP or to capture an objective that's just stuffed into a Lamborghini or something, the possibilities are endless, that's what I'm trying to make clear. Especially for all the snipers out there. You'd have a field day picking a spot to just keep an eye on the streets. I just want to throw all my guns and gear on a blackjack table or send a VB spinning in the roulette. I could play here for a week, but since that'll never actually happen, unless we make a Facebook group page to organize a mass takeover of the Strip, then I guess you can forget about this. The runner-up spot isn't much more promising either, but I'd be pretty daft to not include the Mall of Washington, D.C. Some people might want to seize the Kremlin for themselves instead, but I'll take an event based around the Capitol, or at just one of the many museums, the Space Museum preferably, or at the White House. We just want all of them though. So for the second spot, I'd like to imagine that the entire mall area of DC is ours for the taking. I can just feel the patriotism just thinking about an event like this. This would be the ultimate end all be all Russian versus American event that no one could ever top. Okay, maybe the top spot holder could, but we'll get right to that in a bit. Just one of these buildings is enough to make an event out of, just like our Las Vegas idea. But with all this to play with, you could take your pick of what movie to recreate or what area to set up command in. The staff would probably take the Washington Monument for themselves, and that's fine. Just give us the Oval Office as a main objective area to capture and hold. Would the Pentagon be too far away for us to use? Eh, maybe that would be a spot holder in itself. This would be another great place for snipers, and you can't have an event like this without getting some helicopters in on the action. Minigun helo runs would be absolutely mandatory for something like this. I know I'm missing something to do here, but please excuse me. I've only been to DC once for two hours, but that's why you guys can share your thoughts and opinions about such an idea as playing airsoft and arguably the most famous city on Earth in the comments. With this countdown, I really hope to spark some hype for the Airsoft games we should be looking forward to. I haven't played Airsoft in about three months now, and I'm getting seriously bored at home. Some places in the US have opened back up for Airsoft, but here in Texas, it's a hit and miss if you want to risk getting sick or not. But maybe I'm just being too worried. Regardless, if playing Airsoft in an airport or dashing through casinos in a virtually empty Las Vegas strip doesn't excite you, then tell me, where would you want to play Airsoft if there were no restrictions or rules? I asked Dayton of the House Gamers channel and Silo Entertainment, and they both gave me the same response. I would love to hide in one of those abandoned high-rises, making my way through the ruins looking for targets. Chernobyl just has that legendary status. That's right. For the top spot for this countdown, and probably in your own opinion, Pripyat Chernobyl is the all-time legendary location for places we would love to play airsoft. From the very beginning, I knew this would be the top spot holder. I didn't even need to ask Dayton or Silo. I mean, after all, who would protest to such an idea? Call of Duty, Battlefield, Fallout, Far Cry, any video game themed airsoft event could take place here. Any Russian versus anyone game could be played here. It's the building block for the creepy and scary, the mysterious and interesting, the historic and the macabre. Chernobyl is the prime jewel of discussions of Dream AOs. And if you still don't know why, then look into any history book that covers what happened at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The location of the actual disaster may be out of this realm for even survival, but the many apartments and the courtyards, the pool that I'm sure anyone has seen, and the Ferris wheel park area give us a bunch of real estate to work with. All the building tops and locations locked in time would give us a certain feel that no other location could match. And that's if we ignore the fact that Chernobyl is the location of such a dark disaster. People flock to Chernobyl every day to film vlogs and studies, and to adventure where not many people would ever go. And I think as airsofters, we're all for that. Doesn't matter if you plan to get all gillied up, or if you want to build a radioactive loadout and take some of the best photos you'll ever get. Chernobyl is full of surprises and a dark tone that many people don't even want to dive into. But who would you want to organize an event at a place like this? 
Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Milsom West stepped up to the challenge in this imaginary land we've built up during this countdown. Either way, I better see hundreds of AKs, uh, who am I kidding, thousands of AKs. There's no way a couple hundred people are going to be the only ones to go to Chernobyl to play one of the greatest airsoft events in history. But tell me in the comments how much you pay to get a ticket for a Milsom operation here. I just can't see it being cheap. And with every one of the choices on this countdown, could you imagine how dire communications would be? The factions taking part in any of these games wouldn't have much use for 30 or 50 team members with comms. They would need entire squads of people dedicated to just relaying information back and forth. I don't ever use the term airsoft war too often, but I could see how people would when taking part at events like these. And with that said, I guess I'm done with this countdown. This was all for fun, not really serious. I just fell in love with the idea of doing such a countdown, so I just ran with it. And if you had fun, then let me know by liking this video until it breaks 5,000 likes, or by subscribing if you haven't already. I'd greatly appreciate it. Now I have to thank Dayton of the House Gamers Airsoft channel and Silo Entertainment for joining in the discussion, as well as Mark of Red Wolf Airsoft. And I can't forget about all the channel members who directly support everything I do here by just being channel members. And if you'd like to join them, then click this button next to the subscribe button that says join, so you can get perks that no one else can. I do have plans to treat some of the channel members to a giveaway, so don't sleep on that. And big shoutouts go to these past Super Chat donators from the last live stream. Seriously, thank you to everyone on the screen. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all let's go, let's go. next time. Grab these guys, you're oh, no. Are you alright, dude? Yeah. Yo, 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 yo. You actually have a BB in your glasses. <laughs> you have a BB in your eye pro. I know, I'm trying to get it out. Oh, there we go. I'm good. That's why we wear them. <laughs> <laughs>